So in this video today, we're going to look at how we can deploy a business force container just application into Amazon EKS. And so for someone that isn't familiar to Amazon EKS, essentially it's just a managed Kubernetes service provided by Amazon that was recently GA maybe a month or two ago. So um, it's actually pretty new, um, but just playing around with it a lot, I actually really like it. It's a lot easier to use Kubernetes with EKS than some sort of maybe like COPS or something like that. Obviously they have their pros and cons, but um, EKS is pretty good. Um, so when you're actually deploying your project on B2, uh, you're on EKS um, from BWCE, it's pretty much the same as a normal Kubernetes or normal any other type of platform as a service deployment. So once you've already built out your application, you don't actually need to redesign it or rebuild it to deploy it onto EKS. So that's actually very helpful because if you want to try out the platform and you already have an app, um, just take your ear file and just deploy it. So um, once you actually have your EKS server or uh, cluster set up, and essentially in order to do that, you either go on to a US East 1 or US West 1. There's only two um, regions that are supported right now, and you create a cluster. And with this cluster, um, you also set up your worker nodes and such like that. That takes like maybe 15, 20 minutes to do all this, but it's pretty fast. Um, it's pretty intuitive as long as you follow the getting started guide. And once you have that all set up, then you can also set up um, the ability to view your information via dashboard, um, which is very helpful as well. Um, but all this is running on Amazon, and what, what's really cool about that is that that makes it very easy to integrate with other Amazon services. So let's say you're using CloudWatch or CloudTrail in, ter in terms of to, to do your logging or management. Um, it's just a matter of just saying it, setting your IAM roles. Or if you want to use ECR as your repository, um, you don't have to deal with that pesky token that you have to usually renew every 12 hours. Anyone that's used ECR with some other type of platform knows what I'm talking about. Um, but essentially, because it's a managed service or it's directly Amazon service, they've already dealt with that integration, so um, you don't have to worry about that. So if I was going to deploy a business merge container app onto uh, on EKS or Kubernetes, um, what I would do is first you would have to build the app. Uh, if you already built the app and you already have the ear file, then we'll just start from there. So you have your ear file. Um, this can be obviously this can be any type of app. Um, the app I have right here is a Hello World app, so that's all. That's fine. Um, and then in order to deploy on to Kubernetes, you also need a Docker file to actually build the Docker image. So if you look at the Docker file, um, it's just taking the base, this for container edition image, adding the ear file, then exposing whatever port we want to use. So after we do that, um, if you look at our Docker images, I already created the image uh, just for the sake of to keep the video short. But essentially is that if you're going to use something like ECR, which I highly recommend since, like I said, it's um, integrated pretty well together. Um, you just tag your image as your ECR repository as long with that tag that you want to use. And then after that, then it's just a matter of pushing up into the repository. So once you push that up, it's just a matter of uh, following what it tells you in the repository via your push commands and such. But um, essentially, once you push that up, you'll see that the image tag is there. And you can actually use it. So um, once we have that available onto um, our ECR repository, then we can actually use that image and pull it for our Kubernetes deployment. So um, just like in any type of Kubernetes, same thing with the EKS, you can choose if you want to do it with, um, with the UI, the UI, the QE, or if you want to use the manifest um, way. Um, it's just a matter of preference in this case because it's a simple app. I don't really know configure or fit anything. Um, I'm just going to use the um, web QE. So I'm going to do a BWCE um, EKS sample and then um, I just provide the container image. So I'm just going to copy this URI. And then I have to provide the tag as well. So it knows sample EKS. Um, I'm just going to want pod. And it's going to be an external service. So I'm going to want to make sure that I set that as external. And I'm going to say what ports I need to use. Um, if you want, you can set advanced options. In this case, simple app. That's probably why I'm doing it with the uh, the, the web UI, but essentially, um, if you need to add anything else, you can add advanced options there. I don't, so I'm just going to deploy, and um, you'll see that it'll start up with the deployments and such. So, um, I'll just give that a minute, but I'm just going to show you some other the other apps I've deployed. So I already have two other um, applications, business version container edition applications that I built here. Um, essentially, if you don't see here, uh, this is the uh, load balancing endpoint that I hit. That you can actually see right here, external endpoints. And in this case, it's just an app where if I provide some sort of ID value, then I get some sort of output um, that matches that ID value. So it, it calls it. So it's, it's very simple. Um, it's just a matter of 
uh, building out your project with any other platform, if you already have or if you already deployed projects into any other flavor of Kubernetes, um, you can still use that same here file that you used before and basically just deploy it onto ETS. And um, I highly suggest actually trying that out and getting used to it just because um, if, if you're using Kubernetes on Amazon, this is the way that you're going to want to go. And you can take advantage of all the different things that Amazon provides um, in terms of the integration between the different services that they have and also um, the different uh, features that Kubernetes in itself provides inherently, either being some sort of like DNS service discovery or providing um, like health checks and such like that. So we see that our workload has finished. Um, refresh again, let me make sure that, see the endpoint. So it still hasn't finally propagated, so let's just wait a second or two to uh, finalize it so now I actually see. So now we actually see this 404, um, that's expected because of a Swagger UI, you need to add that to the end. Um, but essentially once I add that Swagger UI to the end, we see the Swagger interface and it's just a simple Hello World app. My name is Chris, it's my name. Um, so yeah, basically I just took a business first container to snap that I already had built, the year file that I already had built, um, that I may have used already for another Kubernetes type of deployment or another platform, um, doesn't matter. And I just uh, I just built that Docker image, just pushed it into the repository and I just pulled it. So it's just a matter of um, just running through those steps. And so in, in future videos, we're gonna go through actually through a lot more of the features that um, ETS provides with BWCE. So look out for that, but this is just a very basic video um, to give you an idea of the process and how that goes. Oh yeah.